Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wheelie Oscar Talk, episode 22. It's the culmination of this season, pretty much, um, where we are going to be giving our final Oscar predictions before the ceremony next Sunday. Lots has happened since we last um, had an an episode that has altered, I'm sure, plenty of predictions. And I'm joined by Anthony and Justin joining us to give both of our, all of our predictions on who will end up winning for this ceremony. Let's start off with the shorts and work our way up to picture. So, best live action short. I guess we can go around um, for each different category, wheel style. Um, This one is a little tricky. There's the whole star factor aspect here, where if there's a famous person in a short, oftentimes it wins, but that did not happen last year with Oscar Isaac's short. Um, But I'm still, I think, hesitantly going to predict Riz Ahmed and The Long Goodbye. Um, I do know the dress everyone involved in that movie has been campaigning a lot. Um, I just don't know if that's c- the kind of short that the Academy usually goes for. And the other one, the one I, I would have at number two is Please Hold, which seems like a kind of topical kind of Black Mirror-esque episode, which they have given to um, as short winners in the past, similar shorts. Um, and that seems to be the one getting the best reception. So that's where my headspace is at with shorts. How about you, Anthony? Well, I've, I've seen all five of these. And uh, The Long Goodbye is, I had mixed feelings on it. It doesn't really feel like a traditional short film and not in a subversive way. It feels like it feels like a part of a piece and we're just seeing a segment of it, which I believe it is. I believe it's part of an album that Riz Ahmed was working on. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, it's very topical. I think, especially with the invasion of Ukraine, it has similar subject material in terms of like outsiders coming in and you know being very oppressive. So that could help it. And I also think uh, there's a lot of support for Riz Ahmed, and I, I, especially after last year, where so many people loved him in Sound of Metal. We saw that that had a very strong contingent in the Academy last year with its two Academy Award wins. So that might benefit the long goodbye. Uh, I have been hearing uh, good things about the dress. I think that is the runner-up. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling I want to go the dress just because they seem to, as we said, uh, as you just said with the Oscar Isaac short not winning, they seem to go generally like what is the best crafted short? You know, maybe the one that's getting around the town more. Uh, Please hold was my favorite, but it doesn't really have a chance of winning. I think because mm-hmm. of its comedic undertones. So I think I'll pick the dress because I do think the long goodbye, some people are just, it, it, they're going to have some, some issues with it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just yeah, everyone who has seen these shorts, I've heard they've said, please hold this their favorite. So that's why I have, I'm tempted to go with it. But what do you think, Justin? Best live action short. I just have the long goodbye only for the fact that it's number one on gold derby. I have zero feelings about any of these, but. I guess I'll put the dress in number two. Gold Derby has it at number three, but whatever. I'll, all of my reasonings will be the same for every short category. Yeah, the shorts are always, they make or break your Oscar ballot. So I think it's always safest to go with the number one. So I think I'm going to stick with the long goodbye, but I may switch last minute to uh, please hold. You're going the dress, Anthony, and your long goodbye, Justin. Yeah, just Correct. to keep it interesting for this conversation, yeah. I think I will go the dress for this. Um, but I may change the long goodbye by Sunday. So we'll see. Um, best documentary short. I think this is the easiest to predict of the shorts, in my opinion. Um, I think the Queen of Basketball is going to win this. How about you, Justin? What do you think? Um, Gold Derby has Queen of Basketball, so I'll say that too. <laughs> nice. Anthony? You've seen these all, right? I didn't see the documentary shorts, but I have heard the most about the Queen of Basketball, so I am predicting that. Yeah. I do think if there's a number two, I would go with Audible because that seems to be a big theme of this season. Um, Deaf actors, the deaf community, especially with CODA, as we will get to in many categories going forward. Um, So I do think that could go with it, but I still think Queen of Basketball, Basketball easily has the best narrative. You've got, I think, big celebrities talking about it. It's the only one that I've heard has billboards up in the LA area. So I think that will likely win. Okay, best animated short. What do you have winning here, Anthony? I think that due to its all ages approach 
And the fact that it's backed by Netflix, I'm going Robin Robin. It's a very charming short film. And I just think a lot of this would have had a bigger noteworthy presence uh, among these other shorts, though all of them uh, were very good. And I maybe the windshield wiper, that was my favorite of these, but Robin Robin is just so charming. I just, I see it working out this way for Netflix. And I assume you're also going Robin Robin, Justin, because it is number one on Gold Derby. Yes, that's correct. Yes, I, I'm leaning towards Robin Robin as well because it's number one and that's kind of the safest bet to go with. But it is, I've heard, the longest of the shorts by a good margin. Um, and I'm not sure how much It's that a half an hour. It's the, the other, it's like a Christmas special. It's basically, yeah. it's, it's a Christmas uh, short. So it's like the length about, of like a Charlie Brown Christmas or How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Um, so yeah, it is the longest one, but I also think, you know, that may help it here because it kind of feels like a classic Christmas short. And so maybe it already has that, that sort of kind of attitude for liking it in that way um, due to its structure. So yeah, I, just, yeah. I, I think the other, the other ones I'm, you know, documentary short, we don't know as much about. Live action short, it could go a couple different ways. I'd be pretty surprised if Robin Robin didn't take it just again because of how, uh, like it has Gillian Anderson and Richard E. Grant in the voice cast. Like it's, it's I think the most like, produced of these shorts though again they have surprised us in the past i mean the fact that the mm-hmm. disney short isn't even here shows that they don't necessarily go for the big money so you know look out for maybe a windshield wiper uh but i'm still gonna pick robin robin yeah i do think i just wonder when these voters are going through all the stuff that they have to watch if they make it through 30 minutes of the best animated short like if they just watch some of it maybe and then another one that's shorter gets more of their attention, like a windshield wiper or box ballet, which would be my two and three. Um, Whether they watch any of these shorts is a question, unfortunately. That's true. That is true, sadly. Um, I I do think the windshield wiper or box ballet will appeal to the um, more highbrow uh, voters, whereas Robin Robin, I mean, they do tend to go with like more of the animal kind of shorts here, which Robin Robin would be, but that is usually a Disney short, but Either way, I, I'm, I'm just talking myself out of it, but I'm going to stick with Robin Robin. Uh, I would not. Box Ballet, I know it's in fourth position on Gold Derby. I would probably put that fifth just because it's Russia's entry, and I don't think anything from Russia is walking home with an Oscar this year. That's true. Does it say what, what country it's from on the ballot? Interesting. I don't know. They just they, When I went to go see them, they say what country at the beginning. If they, they watched it, the they know it's country. Russian too. So. Um, yeah, that too. Which again, I don't. It's I'm not saying that that means it shouldn't be in contention. No, it was a wonderful true. short, but I'm just I don't think anybody wants to do that this year, where they're going mm-hmm. to give an Oscar and they give you know. But again, you know, we've seen political controversies net Oscar wins. You know, when the uh, when the travel ban happened at the beginning of the Trump presidency, uh, Asghar Farhadi's The Salesman, yeah. won, which you know that maybe because of that travel ban, maybe that helped him win, and then you know it was a big moment because he didn't go to the ceremony and it, you know, it was, it was a thing. So maybe, maybe that's a path forward. But again, I, I think it's, they're different political scenarios. And so I don't, I am, again, I'm going to stick with Robin Robin. Yeah, I agree. Windshield wiper would then be my, I think I said it was my number two, but box building, I may knock lower, but either way, Robin Robin. Um, best international film. What do you have at number one here, Justin? Okay. Drive my car. This is probably like, yeah. I, 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 one of the biggest locked categories on, I mean, the one movie that's in picture that, that pretty much always wins if it's a foreign film, if it also gets into picture. Worst person in the world would be my number two, but I think that has a long, long shot at a chance of winning. So drive my car. Same thing, Anthony. Oh yeah, definitely. Drive my car in a landslide. Yeah. Pretty easy category. Uh, best documentary feature, I think also relatively easy. Um, I'm going to go Summer of Soul won pretty much everything the only thing it really missed was the dga um but attica won that and i probably put that at number three but i still don't think that is a shot flea would be number two um flea even lost at places like the indie spirit where you would think it would maybe have a better chance at winning so summer of soul really seems to be the big front runner here how about you anthony same thing yeah i i'm i imagine flea is you know it's a groundbreaking achievement just in its creation but also in the nominations it got but I imagine that 
there are some people who are maybe discovering the medium of animated documentary and it could be quite challenging as terms of like, well, how is this a documentary? And I could see that affecting the the overall voting body. Where Summer of Soul is, it's a more traditional documentary, but that doesn't mean it's any less impressive in how Questlove was able to cut these sequences and really move you and tell this story. So I agree that, you know, the fact that also this is such an American event, the fact that it, it won at BAFTA shows that this does go, it, it goes beyond country borders to really just move any audience from around the globe. So I am going to pick the front runner in Suburb Soul. Yep, the same thing. Another relatively predictable category. Speaking of relatively predictable, best animated feature. Um, do you have Encanto winning, Anthony? I do. Uh, I think Lin-Manuel Miranda should get that Oscar with the producers because he is as responsible, if not more responsible for this movie winning than anything else. Yeah. Uh, uh, as I say this now, my two sisters are dancing along to the sing-along on Disney Plus. So yes, I think Encanto will win this. Um, I just don't think, I mean, the only times that Disney has lost or Disney Pixar has lost this award was Rango during the Cars 2 year, which I think mm-hmm. we can all say was an anomaly. And then Spider-Verse. And then of course, Spirited Away and Shrek, Happy Feet. You know, it's, it's very rare and it's very rarely the, the indie animated film. Uh, yeah. which Flea, I, I would say, is is in the number two position. So I just don't think when you have the entire voting body voting, it's not just the animation branch. They're going to go for the movie that's m- most recognizable. And, you know, th- there are some great animated films here. I know Mitchell's is Jack's favorite. Uh, I just think Encanto, it's traditional in a good way. It's you, you see Encanto and you're like, that's exactly what an animated movie should be. And I think that is what's going to get it the award. Also, because I think Song is going a different category. This will be the only chance to honor Encanto, which the Oscars, you know, the show, the telecast is opening with the We Don't Talk About Bruno live performance. So I think they're going to want to give it something. And I think this is where they're going to give it to Encanto. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty easy prediction for me too. I would actually have Mitchell's as my number two rather than Flea because Mitchell's has... It swept the Annie Awards and it did win the Critics' Choice Award for um, animated film. So I do think it has more awards in its bag than, say, Flea does. Um, but I still think that's a long shot, um, sadly, because it is my favorite. Um, the Lauren Miller past animated movie did upset Disney slash Pixar, but I don't think this one is as strong as Spider-Verse to do that. I also think Encanto, it's usually the movie that's on in households um, very much, like the most, because most of these voters are parents. And I'm sure all their kids, like you mentioned, Anthony, are watching Encanto every day. Um, and also and probably got... will be back next year with Across yeah. the Spider-Verse Part 1. So, you know, I, I'm not lamenting a loss here for them. Although no. Mitchell's is quite good. It's all five nominees, I think, are really well done films. I think this yes. is a, a really, it was a really great year for animation. Yeah, going to be a rare year where Pixar loses. Uh, do you have Encanto winning as well, Justin? I do, but I think we can all agree that if Sing... Sing 2 was nominated, it would have been sweeping all the awards. Yeah, that, that's there. very possible. Yeah. yeah, they didn't nominate it because of that. Best visual effects, we're sticking with the easy category so far. Dune, anyone say anything else about that? Um, moving on. <laughs> yeah. I watched a recent VFX video on how they did the visual effects in Dune, and it's just far and away, in my opinion, the best of the category. Best sound, Dune? Dune, done. <laughs> Dune, yes. Agreed. Okay. Best song. This could have a little more debate to it, but I am going with No Time to Die. I don't think, I think Encanto's song would be number two, but I don't think it is strong enough to surpass this one. Yeah, I agree. I just think that, uh, as I've been saying, you have to go back to Quantum of Solace to find a Bond song that didn't win. I think Billie Eilish and Phineas O'Connell are just beloved by everybody. Their song is one of two in this category, I'm assuming, because none of us saw the Diane Warren movie, um, that the song is actually in the movie. It's not a credit, it's not an end credit song, you know, because Bond movies opening credits are as much a part of the movie as anything else. Um, yeah, and I, ju- I just, I think this is, it's a really great song. I think my thing with Encanto was, are people gonna vote for Encanto as a way to represent all of the songs? But it doesn't seem that is the case. Uh, it still could happen if, again, because, the push to give Lynn an EGOT is only something that the Academy has to respond to. It's not like 
other organizations have to worry about that. But I do think that the build up for No Time to Die it got a Grammy nomination, I believe. And I think it's the only mm-hmm. one of these to get a Grammy nomination, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and all of those have won in the past. It's also extremely rare for a song that wins both of the precursors that I think the Golden Globe and the Critics' Choice Award to yeah. lose here. And this has won both of them. So, and it pretty- gives something to No Time to Die, which I think a lot of people really did enjoy. We saw it surprise in uh, Best Visual Effects and Best Sound. So, you know, there is love for the movie. Also, the BAFTA contingent, I think, can come through best for editing. No Time to Die. It won Best Editing, there, which didn't help yeah. at all. <laughs> How about you, Justin? No Time to Die? Yeah, I'm still very annoyed that the Don't Look Up song or the CODA song were not nominated. Best score, continuing the Dune sweep, any, anything else? Dune? Dune. I mean, maybe Johnny Greenwood, that I just think Hans Zimmer's work on that movie, it's so integral and inextricable to the movie itself. I mean, the reason why you love Dune is because of the score, I think. And I also think largely the reason why it's such a lock in best sound is how the score hits you and so i just think that in the end dude will take this handedly yeah and han zimmer has been doing much more of the um campaigning this season than johnny greenwood has i believe greenwood's been busy with something um so that also helps him very much coming for his second oscar very deserved sadly we will not be seeing it live right now best production design um, what do you have winning here, Justin? Dune, but I still think there's like a 10% chance that Nightmare Alley wins. Also, I think that should be the winner, but... I'm also leaning Dune with a chance that Nightmare Alley could upset. I believe both times Guillermo del, Guillermo del Toro has been nominated for Best Production Design. He's won, which is something interesting. Um, and I do think, I don't know if Dune is just going to win absolutely every tech award, Um, We're going to cover a few others, but I think there is a chance for the people. I mean, Nightmare Alley was strong enough to get into picture. So there's enough people in the Academy who liked the movie. I think they, we know they like being democratic. So I'm very much considering Nightmare Alley could be, this is where it could get its Oscar of the night, but I'm leaning Dune. How about you, Anthony? I, I agree. I think that I am predicting Dune to win six at the end of the night, which would be mighty impressive, especially given that there's only yeah. one sound category, it probably would have won both if sound mixing and editing, editing were still a thing. So the fact that it is winning this much is a mighty impressive feat. Um, and yeah, I just, I think that I believe if my math is correct, it will be the most awarded movie since La La Land. Because La La Land won six also in that tracks, 2017. Yeah. So um, yeah, I just think production design, it's the most different. I think Nightmare Alley, does have the chance to upset, but I just don't know if that movie is in the conversation as much as Dune is. And I do think that like Mad Max Fury Road, like Gravity, people are just gonna be checking the thing off in a lot of these categories. Uh, And deservedly so, the production design, like the other thing too that might help Dune is that all of these components aesthetically, you don't know where one stops and the other begins. Like you don't know what's visual effects, what's cinematography, what's the production design. And so, I feel like they're just going to give it to all to do because it's such a seamless creative effort. Yeah. Between the practical and the visual effects. And they also had to just like, unlike I think pretty much all of these other nominees, they had to like create an entire new world. All of these other nominees had like stuff to based off of in the real world. Um, so very impressive, very worthy. We will all go with Dune. Um, speaking of as eyes of Tammy Faye, Best makeup and hairstyling is next, where I do think Eyes of Tammy Faye is going to win. Uh, won the, it's pretty much won everything in the last few weeks. It did not do well at um, the Makeup and Hairstyling Guild Awards, um, but I don't know. Those are usually a good precursor, but it's swept pretty much everywhere else. So, And it's also going to go in unison with one of my other predictions later on. Um, so yeah, I'm going Eyes of Tammy Faye. How about you, Anthony? I agree. I think that the transformation of Tammy Faye, both just physically, like her look, but then as it matures through the time of the movie, through decades, I think is very impressive. It shows hair and uh, hair, yeah, hair and makeup. Where are my hands? Um, <laughs> and also because Jessica Chastain, again, little uh, preview, is probably winning Best Actress. I just think it's the movie that probably goes hand in hand 
with that win. Uh, the other ones like Cruella, they tend to be more makeup focused than hair focused, and that seems to be more of a hair focused film. Uh, Dune, possible, but I think that it's more subtle work, and I think they're awarding it at so many other places. Uh, House of Gucci and Coming to America, it's an honor to be nominated. So yeah, I think, it, and that's mighty impressive for the eyes of Tammy Faye, which a lot of people wrote off. Uh, the mm-hmm. fact that it's back in here and possibly winning two Academy Awards. Um, it's great for that film. I'm very happy for it. Yeah, it's going to go yeah. two for two. Eyes of Tammy uh, Faye and maybe Coda going to sweep yeah. all its awards. Possible. They do like to go for, especially in the past few years, I'm pretty like the past five years, I think they've gone for like the makeup that transforms actors. Um, so it would really either be Eyes of Tammy Faye or House of Gucci, or I guess Coming to America. But I would actually have my number two as Dune just because of how strong it is. Here we are moving on to a trickier one. Best film editing. Um, I'm, go- I'm not completely even sure what I'm going to go with yet. So I'll throw it off to you first, Anthony. What do you have winning best film editing? Thank you, Jack. So, You're welcome. So nice. um, yeah. All right. King Richard won the A Study Award. It did. Uh, West Side Story won the Critics' Choice. Not mm-hmm. nominated. No Time to Die won the BAFTA. Not nominated. Power of the Dog, if I, I, if you're predicting that for Best Picture, and I don't know yet if I am, we'll get to that in a couple minutes. I kind of feel like it's difficult for anybody to say it's winning picture and director, and that's it. So there's your argument for editing, but I don't know if that's but a strong. It's it's pretty rare, at least in the past few years, for the movie to win picture to also win editing. It usually goes to a different movie. I agree. So I think I'm going to go with Dune because I think that it is just the technical achievement movie. And because none of these other films seem to be claiming it in any sort of way and seem to be obvious with their editing, I think that they're just going to Dune. I also think that as Jack has been saying this entire season, the link up between editing and sound is strong. So yeah, I just, it's very tough. King Richard would probably be my number two because, you know, if you play the tennis sequences, you know, like Bohemian Rhapsody, you play one sequence, maybe that gets you the win. And maybe some people do want to give King Richard something other than Will Smith. So that's a possibility. And, uh, you know, it, it may be one that I take later in the week, but I do think that when all is said and done, Dune just feels right. So I'm going to go Dune. Yeah. I'm really stuck on this one because also with Best Actor, which I think we know who's going to be winning that, um, pretty much everyone of those actors who have won Best Actor in the past decade, their movies have also won at least in one other category. This is, I think, King Richard's best shot to do that. Um, Also, I believe there's no movie that has lost all of the precursors that we're talking about and still ended up winning best editing, which Dune would be the first to do that. So it could break that history, but that's, that's a big precursor to break. Um, I'm I'm so lost on this and King Richard, it did win the ACE, but ACE isn't the most accurate in terms of predicting wise. They're very iffy on that. Uh, Tick to boom also won there, but that didn't get into picture, So I would not really consider it. Um, there's the sound correlate. It's really if you want to go with the sound correlation, which is what helped Sound of Metal last year, or um, the fact or the precursor thing, because every editing winner has at least one one precursor beforehand, which Dune has not. Um, so it's about which one you want to pick. How, what are you going with, Justin? I'm also going with Dune because I feel like that's the only thing that makes sense to win. I feel like the only one that has like a 0.0% chance is don't look up, which I thought I liked that movie, but the editing like really bothered me, especially the Ariana Grande song part that annoyed me. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't think, I mean, that is most showy editing, but I don't think that will be strong enough to get in. Um, I do really think it's down to Dune and King Richard here and I'm very stuck on it. For now, I'm going to go with Dune because of the sound correlation, but I'm like 51% Dune, 49% King Richard. So best costume design. This is another relatively easy one. Um, We've got a sweeper here. It's Cruella. Agreed. 
It's going to be one of my favorite wins of the night. I'm so excited. Yeah. Benny Beaven, yeah. her work is extraordinary. This could be put in a museum exhibit. That's how good these costumes are. And I'm so happy. And I'm also, because this, you know, Cruella is not like a Best Picture nominee. It's not, you know, it's not in conversation for these other awards. It's solely here because this particular category, it is deserving. And I love when the yeah. Oscars do this, where they're not just, you know, oh, okay, well, let's just pick the five best in this category that are also Best Picture nominees. I like that Cruella is winning here as it should, and it will be one of my favorite wins of the night. Agreed. Chef Glenn Close and um, Emma Stone present a category together if they want all these movie reuniting people, but they won't do that because they don't like making the right decisions. Best Cinematography. Hmm. What do you have winning here, Justin? I was actually struggling with this because I feel like Me too. Dune, like the obvious like front runner but i feel like if power of the dog wins best picture this is the best chance at anything other than director that it will win so yeah i'm also going with dune i feel that for cinematography greg frazier is getting a nice bump from the batman and it just feels like when you talk about a film's prowess in its camera work in what you're seeing on screen there's just no comparing it to Dune. I think The Power of the Dog is a strong number two, but I think as we saw last year, and as I mentioned last week, last year we had a more naturalistic film with Nomadland going up against a more, and I don't mean this with a negative connotation, a more manufactured shot, uh, shot film with Mank. You know, there's, there's more technical uh, precision to the look of Mank over Nomadland and Mank won. So I think the same thing is going to happen here where, yes, yeah, sure, the, the beautiful vistas and what Ari Wagner captures in her work with The Power of the Dog is exquisite. I think just Dune is just such a behemoth here. And I also think Greg Frazier, so many people really respect him that I think that he will take another win for Dune in this category. Yeah, and looking at past winners, Power of the Dog is usually not the kind of movie that they um, have win here it's a much more subtle film like i I think you said they go usually with the more technical prowess films like um aroma a mank blade runner 2049 those kind of movies lately rather than the smaller movies but it is pretty rare for a movie without a best director nomination to win cinematography it's only happened i believe twice in the preferential ballot maybe three times um um, one of them was with the Denis Villeneuve film with Blade Runner 2049, but all, that also had the Roger Deakins factor. Um, so I am a little stuck here, especially if we have Campion winning director. I feel like it has to win something else, and I feel like this is its most likely spot to win. So um, I'm, I, I'll am i right now, I'm going to say The Power of the Dog. I, I, wa- I want to do it. I want to be you right now, but I just, the conventional wisdom... I don't know. I just, yeah. I, if it's just, Land won last year, maybe, but I just, I don't see it happening. There's, there, it's very close. I feel it is. I think there hasn't been the movie that had like the least win to nomination ratio is The Graduate, which went one for seven, I believe. And if we have Campion, if we have Campion being the only thing Power of the Dog wins, that's one for twelve. That's a big jump. So I just feel like it has to win something else, and I feel like this is its most likely spot. So that is, and I think picture, as I mentioned, picture, or not picture, director and cinematography are very linked. How the Dog could take a Roma-esque route this, route this year. Um, the Netflix artsy auteur film losing to a more crowd-pleasing movie, um, but it still ends up winning director and cinematography. So that is where I'm leaning, but Dune is just as likely. So that's cinematography. It's not going to get any easier in the next category. The screenplays. Best original screenplay. What do you have winning, Justin? I have, okay, I have Belfast, but I feel like there's a chance that it might not happen. Yeah, I think, honestly, all these movies have like a slight chance. Even like King Richard, I think, has a slight chance. I, I am also going Belfast um, because, I mean, if Licorice Pizza won the WGA, then I would have gone with that, but... I think, like I said, I said last week, I think Licorice Pizza and Worst Person in the World are splitting votes between each other. I think 
the people who, if worst person in the world wasn't here, they would be voting for licorice pizza, but they're instead voting for worst person in the world. Um, it's just not strong enough. And when you think both Kenneth Branagh and Paul Thomas Anderson, both very overdue for Oscars. And when you think like which one, if you like, oh, this is what Kenneth Branagh won his Oscar for, Belfast, or this is what PTA won his Oscar for, licorice pizza. Belfast just seems like much more likely in my opinion. So that's sort of why I'm going with that as well. How about you, Anthony? Yeah, I mean, I just think that I maybe I haven't seen the same just I feel like Belfast hasn't had the same passion as some of these other movies, but it really hasn't, you know, there hasn't been some major movement against it. And I feel like Belfast is just your traditional type of winner here. They love I think they wanted to give something to Brana. I think they really respect him as a filmmaker. And Licorice Pizza, like it losing the WGA, this is a group that gives its winners like eighth grade. It mm-hmm. goes for these unconventional type of screenplays. And the fact that Licorice Pizza couldn't pull it off without Belfast in the category, I think shows that that movie is weak in its chances due to some of the subject material that has proven to be controversial. Um, I don't think it's necessarily warranted. Uh, I don't think of films, you know, representing a morally despicable character means the movie is morally despicable, but I do think that's affecting it. Um, I don't think PTA's defense of the scene was very well thought out as well. I feel like he could have yeah, so done better. I just, in the end, I just think that Belfast is going to win here. It has, you know, a double the nominations of Licorice Pizza. Yeah. And there just seems to be more love for the film overall. And I do think they're going to want to give it something. And that something is going to be here. Yeah. And PTA gets in with like every movie he makes. Kind of brought a, is very hit or miss with, in general. And even with the Oscars. So. Death of the Nile, Best Adapted well. Screenplay 2024. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe, maybe Army Hammer for Supporting Actor. Nope. Best Adapted Screenplay. This is the trickier of the screenplays for me, in my opinion. But uh, mm-hmm. I think I'm going to have to go with Coda because it won WGA. It, it's won pretty much everything. The BAFTA win is what's... Because it they won, didn't even want it. It beats Power of the Dog. You'd think BAFTA, is that, that's the place where Power of the Dog would... Be stronger because the British tend to be a little more artsy fartsy than the American subject people. But um, yeah, I don't know. It just seems it seems very very likely. What what are you going with, Anthony? I'm going Coda. I think that you know the fact that BAFTA gave Best Picture and Director Power of the Dog, but gave Coda Best Adapted Screenplay, is I think showing signs that they want to not only spread the wealth, but they want to give Sean Heater something because she will not win in the other two places that code is up for awards. Um, Mm -hmm. I think the lost daughter, if it was nominated for best picture, I think it would have a better chance, but I really don't think it's going to go up against the other two, given that they're best picture nominees. Mm -hmm. Uh, The only thing that I think kept it in there was the Maggie Gyllenhaal is the fact that she is a well-known talent. And I love the screenplay, but I, in the end, I do think it's going to Coda. And to be honest, I don't think it's that big of a race here. I, I think we're just seeing a re- uh, repeated trend from last year where Nomadland was sure a director for Chloe Zhao. And so they decided to go elsewhere for adapted screenplay. And like the father winning there, I think Coda is going to win here. I think Coda has stronger chance and best adapted screenplay than it does in picture uh, as yeah. we get to. Yeah, I agree with that. It's just like, it throws me off because the father, like that's like a really well done screenplay. Coda, I mean, it's like a remake of a French film. I know it is adapted, but I do think out of all the nominees here, it would be the fifth best, in my opinion. Just I, out of all I things agree. to award the film, script just seems odd of all places to award it. But I guess since it only got three nominations and the support for it has grown so much more, that that's the place where they have to do it. What um, I think is telling here is that I agree with you. And I don't know, Justin, where you land in terms of the quality Coda. of the script. Like, you love Coda. So, but it, listen, and I, I think it's a fine film and I'm not going to be upset. I mean, uh, if it wins, I think, you know, as far as representation, representation for the deaf community, that's of course wonderful. And it is, it is a very charming film. And I do think it, going back to some of our discussions when Spider-Man No Way Home came out, I don't think there should be a delineation between favorite and best. If Coda moved you, then you should vote for Coda. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't say the script is the best part of the movie. 
But I think what this shows is that if Coda's in there, people want to give Coda the award. And that passion to give Coda anything that it can get could help it when we get to Best Picture. I assume you're going with Coda as well here, Justin. Yeah, I've been kind of obsessed with this movie over the last, like, month. I've watched it, like, four times. I've been predicting it to win this since way before the BAFTAs, but I didn't think it was actually going to happen, but now it is. So I'm really yeah. excited about that. Coda's number one fan here. Um, I, d- I also do think, in terms of this category, I, I know last week I said Drive My Car Had a Shot. I don't know if I would say that anymore. Um just because I do think when we talk about vote splitting, I think Drive My Car, The Power of the Dog, and The Lost Daughter all have very similar people who would vote for it, whereas Coda is the only crowd pleaser in that category. The opposite of Best Picture. Yeah. <laughs> Where the feel-good one is the, sta- is the loner in this category. Yeah. It's interesting. I just do wonder if, if nominations like, were announced like just a few weeks ago rather than a few months ago. Like, would Coda have gotten more nominations? Because oh, it yeah. feels like it's... But, like, I don't think it would get into director. I don't, maybe no. editing? I think it would have gotten into original song, supporting actress, maybe best actress. I think it maybe would have doubled what it got. But still, then it's missing, like, the two crucial categories of editing and director. So I agree. Which we'll get to best picture. Yeah, um, we, will. we might as well get to it now, because are, is anybody... Yeah, debating? we can quickly go through the acting categories. So Troy best Kotzer. supporting actor, Troy Kotzer. Yeah, that's pretty much Again, it. I would say. I think all the Cody's power of the dog actors two. are number two. Would, would you agree? Yeah, yeah, I would agree. Okay. Supporting actress is Ariana DeBose. Yep. Agreed. Kirsten, actually, no. I would say Andrew Ellis is number two there. I feel like she has a lot of support. Um, and I would see, since King Richard, I think is a very strong movie. I would actually have her as number two and Dunst as number three. I still have Dunst at number two, but Anjanou Ellis is beloved in this movie. I would slightly lean towards her. I do think, especially as people have been talking about to our At The Awards shows that when they announce her name, she gets one of the biggest applauses. So I would say she's number two, but either way, Arne DeBose is winning. Um, Best actor, Will Smith, sweep here. Done. Number two, probably Benedict, but yeah. Um, question for you: Do you think? See, I think that best actor is prob. Uh, yeah, best actor is probably the most like. That's the one that if I was going to predict an upset, I would predict it there. But I don't. I would think say it's actress. Like I'd say actress is the most open right now. Speaking of which, I, I'm predicting Jessica Chastain and actress. Um, yeah. I agree. Num- the number two I would have there is honestly, I don't think most people have her at number two. I have Penelope Cruz at number two um, because that it's is just the one. Whether the, it's, it's just a question of whether they see the movie. Yes, yes. I think that is the one performer here who Chastain has not gone up against in terms of, because she's competed against Coleman, Kidman, Stewart, um, but she has not gone up against Penelope Cruz. Um, I, I think, think people, it's for time. I think people no, love I think it's definitely. If I just I think Chastain is definitely winning. I just think this would be the argument for the number two, especially I think Sony Pictures Classics knows how to campaign, especially towards the older Academy members. Um, they're known for like their quiet and deadly campaigns, like they did with the father, um, that they quickly pop up. Um, I just and they also are known for their campaigns to like pop in at the last second, just like the father. Um, I also think. If so, the, the father was a best picture nominee. It was, yeah. Not. Yeah, that's true. Um, but also, I think it got more than just actress nomination on like some uh, nominees here. Like got score. score. Got score, um, which shows that there's support outside of the Academy there. Um, and just in general, I think if, if the international members are going to support someone, I do think they could very much lean towards Cruz. So that's my argument for her being number two, but I'm still very much going with Chastain. Do you agree, Justin, on all the four acting? Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd be surprised if you didn't. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, and then director I'm, Campion. I, yeah. I just think it's done. I don't think that anybody else has an actual yeah. chance of getting on that. I think if Denis Villeneuve was here, there's a chance he could upset here just because it is really rare for someone to win just best director. I think it's going to happen this year, but I do think her comments also probably hurt her. 
Um, and I don't think it's, I think it's the fact that there is no clear number two is the fact is what's hurting her. If Denis Villeneuve was here, I think that's the clear number two, but I'm not sure if it's Spielberg, if it's Brana, I don't think it's Anderson or Hamaguchi. So I think it's just very up in the air. I think it's hers. It's still shocking to me. Like think about if like gravity won all its awards and Alfonso Cuaron wasn't nominated or George Miller wasn't nominated for Mad yeah. Max or Damien Chazelle for La La Land. The fact that Denise is not here, like the more you realize how much it's winning now, it's still mind boggling. But yeah, I just think Jane Campion, this is going to be the win for the power of the dog without a shadow of a doubt. And maybe it's only win. Maybe. I just, I don't know. I'm not going with that as we saw with cinematography, but I also think one of the reasons to maybe kick Dune out of at least one of the technical awards, I think it'll probably win five is because no movie, I think Mad Max is the movie the, to win the most technical awards without a best director nomination. And then I believe it was six. Well, but Mad Max, comp- not George Miller. He was nominated. Mad Max was he was nominated. Oh, well, I'm Miller's thinking of a different movie then, but either way, it's hard to win that many technical awards when you aren't in best director. So I think it's going to get five, but not six, mm-hmm. but either way, Campion is going to win. Okay. Now it's, now it's the big, the big one. The Best most picture. up in the air, in my opinion, and it's down to two. Can it's 50, agree 50 it's here. And it's down to two, yeah. The only one that could upset is King Richard, I think. Maybe, like 2% chance. All right, Justin, do you want to give us, I think I know what you might be predicting, but do you want to give us your take on this race first? Yeah, so I'm changing this every like millisecond, but I'm predicting Coda right now because it has three of the major guild wins. And the only thing is the fact people are comparing it to Little Miss Sunshine, which is like yeah. doing the same exact thing. But the thing with that is like the ballot thing was different. It had like the, the preferential the, ballot. Yeah. Yeah. So Coda has right been now. performing well on the preferential ballot because the only precursor with the preferential ballot is PGA and it just won that. Um, so yeah. I'm also leaning towards Coda, which is crazy because, like, before PG, I would have said like it's definitely Power of the Dog. Um, I no, I believe no film that has won both PJ and SAG has lost Best Picture in the preferential ballot era. Um, I, I mean, I think, like you said, Little Miss Sunshine would be the only comparison, but that wasn't. I think it, under the preferential ballot system, that could have potentially won, and also if that season was like maybe one month longer that like it is this year, that movie could have gained more buzz like Coda did. Um, the only thing holding me back is in the past few years, aside from Green Book, the Academy has gone for more highbrow winners. Um, and, and they're also in general more highbrow than SAG and PGA tend to be in what they choose to have win. But I don't know. I'm still, I'm leaning Coda. How about you, Anthony? Well, uh, so Justin's point about Little Miss Sunshine, I think it should be noted that Little Miss Sunshine went up against an, an anomalous year because it was the year that we were finally going to give Martin Scorsese his due with The Departed. Yeah. Um, so, and the other thing too is I do kind of don't take, you know, even if that wasn't the case, I tend not to take precursors from pre-preferential balloting era because it's just a completely yeah. different way of voting for Best Picture. Mm-hmm. Coda has the SAG. It has the WGA, it has the Producers Guild, it has a BAFTA nomination for Best Adapted Screenplay. The only place it didn't really show up was directing, which is understandable because this isn't really a director's field and Sean Eater is not a well-known name. You yeah, could Green argue, didn't get it either. Exactly. But even then, Peter Farrelly's a name. Jane Campion, and established director. Kenneth Branagh, established director. Steven Spielberg, need I say more. Paul Thomas Anderson, established director. Rusuki Hamaguchi, is an established director in Japan. And so Mm -hmm. he is well known among the directing community. Sean Heater is not. Um, So I think that's why DGA necessarily didn't go her way. As I brought up an adapted screenplay, it seems that where Coda is in contention, people want to give it the award. Do I think that the lack of nominations from every other category besides supporting an actor and adapted screenplay could hurt it. Of course, the fact that it doesn't have a directing and editing nomination would be a mind-blowing stat if it broke It's going to break a ton of precursors. Yes. 
But it also, it's a very different movie. Like, I believe this would be the first time that a Sundance movie won Best Picture. So it is a very different movie. And so I think that we can't apply this very different movie to the same statistics that we expect to see. Now, Power of the Dog has quadrupled the number of nominations. Mm -hmm. And you do see a lot of passion for the film. People like Ang Lee, Martin Scorsese, Guillermo del Toro, Bong Joon-ho, I believe. They're all coming out and talking about this movie. And they're talking about it with the passion that creates Best Picture winners. And I think the international voters of the Academy could help Power of the Dog because we've been seeing films, like if, if, if I had to put Power of the Dog into a category, it, it very much fits into the Parasite and Nomadland trajectory that we've been going post Green Book. But I do feel that at this moment in time, when voting is happening, when there Only is- Only one more day. Yeah. When there's chaos on the world stage, we're still in a pandemic. I just feel that it seems that Coda just has the momentum that it needs. And that would be a really, really wonderful for that movie to win that award. I think that Campion is what you are honoring with uh, the film by giving her best director. You, Jack brought up that it might win cinematography. So that might be another win there. And it, you know, who knows? It may pull off an acting upset. But it just feels that when it comes to actually voting for the winners, Coda just has this beloved enthusiasm that you don't see in many films. And as far as a preferential balloting system goes, PGA is the only other award to be voted on the preferential balloting. And the fact that Coda won there is impressive. I mean, Coda, Parasite didn't even win at PGA. That was 1917. Mm -hmm. So the fact that Coda won at PGA, I kind of feel that it's, it's going to it's gonna happen. It's hard it's to, deny. hard to deny. But again, there are so many things that Coda would be breaking that if it doesn't win, I would completely understand it. But I, maybe this is my own thing. I predicted 1917 because it just felt like the more traditional winner. It felt like it had the statistics behind it. And of course it didn't win and Parasite won. And I was very happy for Parasite despite also liking 1917. And so this year I'm like, listen, I'm just going to learn from my mistakes and I'm going to go out and, you know, take a risk on the one that seems to have more passion building at the right time. And for that, I am going to predict Coda for best picture, which means that the video that I recorded for my own channel predicting the Oscars, I now have to go back and change. <laughs> yeah. A lot has changed within the last few days. I just, I don't think I have felt this kind of passion for a movie in a while, aside from Parasite, which won um, in a while. I mean, there's just a very strong passion for this. And I feel like it's pretty undeniable. So yeah, we're all leaning towards Coda. Any final First thoughts on it? Win. Yeah, that's crazy. Apple TV, poor Netflix, beating Netflix. Apple TV Plus. Try. I gotta tell you, between Ted Lasso and now this, a Best Picture win, they have really, you know, they've done a great job of launching that service. Um, a lot of great shows on there. Um, and yeah, just like with the Emmys, Netflix was chasing best drama series forever. And the first streamer to get it was Hulu with The Handmaid's Tale. So it seems that the same thing mm -hmm. is going to happen. But yeah, listen, Power of the Dog could still win. I still think the lack of a directing and editing nomination, like both of those really is making it difficult. Um, but we go through these other categories and it's, Power of the Dog is not really winning anything. It doesn't seem that it seems the passion was there to give it all these nominations, but it doesn't seem there's a lot of passion to give it the win. And we'll never know why, you know, what changed, but it seems that people discovered CODA, like Justin was saying, in this interim between nominations and wins. And it really just mm -hmm. hit. And it's People really like impressive. recent discoveries too. They're like, yeah. what, they're very short-minded, these voters. So whatever's on their mind right now. And part of the doc came out in November. I mean, Coda came out in August, but it's hit its stride recently. Yeah, I I do so, just wonder if it is if there is a Netflix bias with this, just because I don't know. I don't think so. I think again, Power of the Dog is just it's what I love about the movie and why it's my favorite of these and my favorite movie of the year was how challenging it was and it confronted people and you know it. That's what's great about it. It, whether people are in the mood for the movie and whether they go back and revisit it, 
how it plays on a streamer. I got to see it both times in theaters. How does it play on Netflix? That's a possibility. The Netflix bias might just be in how it's viewed. Coda, I think, plays much better on a streamer than Power of the Dog does, possibly. Mm-hmm. So it, it's very interesting. Um, I, you know, I, I really like Coda and I love Power of the Dog. So I'm going to be happy with whatever wins here. Um, it's, de- it's very, very interesting. So we'll, we'll see. Is. We'll definitely see. Power of the Dog definitely has a lot going for it. But I think Coda... Coda's got it, more. Coda reeks of the spotlight, moonlight, green book. The, the, the winner, it's the movie that wins because it just has the support that is just unparalleled by the other people. Parasite. It just has this, this rush of enthusiasm that when we see it, I, I just can't ignore it. Yes, agreed. So we are all going with Coda, and I just also hope that it doesn't tarnish the movie's um, legacy too much, as it did. Like, I mean, Green Book kind of deserves it, but I already see people saying that, um, I've even mentioned it myself, that it losing two movies that most people consider are better. Um, people are comparing it to, like, Hallmark movies and such. I just do hope that it doesn't tarnish it too much. But... I mean, listen, there's no controlling the legacy of certain films. You'll definitely see those thing pieces out there. And, you know, I listen, people are going to have their opinions. It's just, and sometimes they're going to be very reductive. But in the end, what matters and what the, the good that a Coda win could do in terms of, we've been talking about this, the fact that Troy Kotzer, like the large reason he'll, he'll win is because these roles don't come along for actors like this, and especially they don't, they don't come twice. That may yeah. change them, and that is what okay. is important. And so people can write all the think pieces they want. And th- again, I'm saying this as Coda is my sixth favorite of these movies of Best Picture. The good that it will do will be felt within the industry. And you just, I can't not be happy that these people had a movie released 14 months ago at Sundance and it is now the front runner for best picture. That is insane to me and worth praising no matter what quality the movie is. And the movie is so pure at heart. So how, I mean, how can you hate the movie? Yeah. You definitely do have to look out for Apple TV going forward in these seasons. Cause that is some crazy good campaigning and the way they've timed this all out. So worth the 25 million. Yeah, definitely. Agreed. So any final thoughts on any of these categories? All good. I just want to say that whoever is comparing Coda to a Hallmark movie has probably never seen a Hallmark movie. And probably. <laughs> like, yeah, I think I think Coda hopefully will age well. I think it's definitely better than a Hallmark or Disney Channel movie, but it um, it's not my favorite of the category. But I do think it would be a great win for the industry. So yeah, yeah, like the video, subscribe, comment all of your predictions down below. Where do we differ? Um, in some of these crazy categories. I'm still stuck. I'm stuck on editing and cinematography so much. So we shall see if those change by the time the Oscars roll around. Tune in for our coverage of the winners, reactions, breakdown, all that fun stuff. And we will see you all for that stuff soon. Bye, everyone.